Welcome to Resilience, a project launched by Ali to expose the honest and unfiltered stories of today's entrepreneurs. Real stories by real entrepreneurs. Welcome back, and we are here uh, with another episode of our Resilience Awards. Um, and as you know already, the point is to focus on real entrepreneurial journeys and the things that are really happening when you try to build a company. With me are two amazing entrepreneurs that have built amazing products and services, like always. Um, and I would just want you to get to know them a little bit and hear their stories and get further down the truth of what it's really like to grow a business and the lessons that you learn along the way. So guys, introduce yourselves. Hi, Jason. My name is John Hui. I am the co-founder and the head of business development strategy at Tuiyach. Cool. Okay. And I'm uh, JP Benini, co-founder and CTO of Elemental Path. And uh, we make little talking dinosaurs for kids. And which is awesome. And I, I told JP, I was like, you are putting that toy <laughs> on the desk. And this is actually a really special toy. Um, and I, I, as you guys know already, like we don't really go into the products and services too much. This isn't an advertisement or anything. Um, this is really more of an educational piece, you know, on what it's like to build something like this. Because to the outside world, I want to hold that thing. Like <laughs> to the outside world, um, it looks it looks easy. You know, it's in front of you. Yep. And with you, you're you're looking at it, and you're like, that is blood, sweat. Yeah, you, have, you have to explain it's two and a half years in the making and yeah. then you're going to fail a lot before you get there and right. a lot of people are going to tell you that it's not going to work and you have to make it work. So that's the thing. Like, uh, it, it, from the outside perspective, you raise millions of dollars or you're making money and it's like, holy shit, you know, this is like out of the blue. Um, so I'm going to ask you some uncomfortable questions, you know, and I just want you both to be as forthcoming as possible, you know, for everybody to kind of hear where it's, where, where the, your heart comes from. What's the worst shit you've ever been through as an entrepreneur? It was, I would have said it was about uh, almost a year ago that uh, when we were launching at a very important client as one of, as soon as I got involved with us two years, during the launch meeting, the training meeting, everything was ready to go, and the product did not work. Okay. And I All got right. uh, a bunch of uh, hospital IT security people on the side looking to scrutinize our solution, and something happened. <laughs> it okay. didn't work the way it should work. There was a pretty uh, uh, devastating uh, experience where we were, so the solution we have is basically is a communication platform from EMS to hospitals. And it happened to we sending some cases uh, to the, this hospital in Virginia, and uh, our the other client in Boston called that they say they received the case. <laughs> oh, so it went to the wrong place. It went to the wrong place. Okay, got it. So, so just to, you know, because I I'm, get a clear understanding of what you do. So it's basically a real time tool real -time to tool. communicate EMS with hospitals. Correct. So they know about what's about to happen. Yeah, they know what kind of patients the EMS is about to bring in and when they will arrive. Uh, the, it, it is intent, it intends to replace the radio communication, which is, which is the status quo since yeah. 1960. Yeah, CB radio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, what type of tools are used? I know I don't like to get a lot into sure. the products, but this is actually really yeah. interesting. Yeah. I mean, in it's a, a big problem. The paramedics and EMTs, they use a secured HIPAA compliant smartphone app to send in the patient's vital signs, symptoms, demographic information quickly via a smartphone app. And the hospital receives everything in real time instead of playing the phone game. So how many hospitals use this right now? We have about 13 hospitals right great, now. Great, yeah. great. So you were pitching like, you're, this, is, this is it, I got my product, you built it. You went back and forth in the lab, and it's not working. It and it goes to another hospital. It was after all the pitch we are launching to implement. You're like, oh, we're yeah. so badass. Yeah. We're saving lives. This technology is ridiculously amazing. And all of a sudden, it's, being, it's not worth it's, it's life saving. Then what happened was the IT security team, about two weeks before the launch, they started giving us a hard time. After all the approvals from the CIO, from the corporate exec, from the hospital executives, they were saying, no, 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 don't worry. This is fine. It's been tested. And uh, on the date of training, <laughs> in this I, case. I can imagine that. And I think the real, one of the beautiful lessons in here is that when you're dealing with big bureaucratic institutions. Yes. I say beautiful lesson. I mean the, the most <laughs> fucked up shit, yeah. you know. Um, the fact is that you can get a deal. 
you can execute a deal and because of the systems that are set in place, yep. can cause something that's completely out of your control to affect your technology and your product. I mean, that's like, be prepared to do, this is what it's like to do big business. Right. You know, this is what's going to happen. So how, what'd you do? It took us a seven month to get to where we were at. And we spent all the money to visit the client. And uh, it was initially a f free trial. And after all the resources we invested, we fucked up basically right on right. the spot. <laughs> and it was embarrassing because uh, How could it not be? Uh, very embarrassing. And um, so we basically had to stay cool. I mean, naturally, my business partner and I, we are, you know, very resilient people. And uh, we, you know, acknowledge the mistakes and we're going to investigate. We're going to come up with a plan. It was actually a very small technical issue, but because of... I would say now looking back, lack of testing, you know, and uh, it happened. A software product, you can never test more than more than enough. So, and uh, we tried to explain to this client, and uh, we had uh, some support from the hospitals, but guess what? We didn't win it back. We lost the That's client. You lost the That's client. You didn't win it they, back. Yeah, the, well, they said. I, that, I thought this was going to be like, like a Cinderella yeah, you story. Wish, yeah, we wish that they kind of like say, yeah, after you fix, let us know after a few months. After a few months, when we had more clients, we came back. They basically came up with another excuse. They say, you know, the, the summary was they said we, they didn't want to become our first multi-hospital client. I think that the way I would feel about it in my world is that that would motivate me to get new clients. And that's, that's what you did, right? I mean, you yeah. didn't let that stop you. You're still here. No. You know, you're hustling. <laughs> we were about to get ready for this whole thing, and you were on your phone, you're doing your thing, so you're obviously plowing through it, right? right. So what did you learn out of that? Like, what, what was the biggest lesson you learned yeah. out of it? So obviously Based from our own executional perspective that we should always do rigorous testing no matter what preparation mm -hmm. can, you know, can prepare more than enough. On the other hand, it's a really, that was a kind of like a, a motivational factor to say, we really want to build a successful platform to go back, to show the client to say, they are the one that missed the opportunity to be put on a national map to be a very innovative hospital mm. to try something that's really cool. Mm. And uh, that's our motivation that we kept talking about this, that one day they're going to regret that they had that opportunity to become the multiple hospital system in the whole country in the middle of, you know, south <laughs> in Virginia and to put it on national map. But since uh, the failure, we actually won the innovation, digital innovation awards from the American Medical Association, American Heart Association. and. Uh, Great. You know, it was a one-time mistake. Obviously, we take all the responsibilities, but that's what really motivated us to say one day we're going to go back. I, I love that. And, and moving on to JP, because let me tell you, like, I have a nephew. You know, <laughs> I even told you, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it on the record, I'm buying this thing. Um, just to give a really quick background um, from my own perspective, um, this toy is a, is a very advanced toy. It's almost like not a toy. We try to make it the smartest smart toy possible. Even when we started the project, we saw that most uh, educational toys were like, press a button, get a cookie. Yeah. Uh, press this, hear a song, get a light. Yeah. And with the current state of technology, it's, we could do better. We could offer better. And your, your phone has some of the most advanced technology available in the last decade. Uh, but it's not really meant for kids, but kids are playing with it all the time. Yeah, uh, true. What we did was take the best of that stuff that would work with a kid, that could be specialized for a child, used in education, used in uh, engagement, and build out something specifically for them. Got it. And it's powered off of Watson technology? We, yeah, we use Watson as a component for our, our knowledge base and some of our games. Uh, but in terms of the engine that actually drives like the stories, the conversation, yeah. the jokes, and remembers it's everything, all that's all us. Yeah. That's what we've and you're about. in uh, Toys R Us. You we're have... in Toys R Us, we're on Amazon. We have more of an online presence than anything. Yeah. Um, we have a couple more uh, brick and mortars. This is actually our first, well, last year was our first year in sales even. Yeah. Uh, we started actually uh, shipping out the Kickstarter uh, uh, first m ones that we built out yeah. back in, uh, what was that, April? And then from that point, we got into retail. Uh, retail kicked off, I want to say, the beginning of September. So even at like less than a full year. Yeah. The thing about the toy world is you make 70% of your profit during the holidays. 
And as far as my All pain right, point story, yeah. my pain point was the holidays. Give it to us. <laughs> Let us know. Uh, so when we, we originally built out the first batch of dinos, second batch of dinos, fourth batch of dinos. Uh, we were fine with the numbers. Uh, everything was great. So expecting this large amount of sales coming in, things with like everything's going to light up literally on one or two days around the holidays, we have to be ready for that. So we did scale up our systems, we tested everything, we load balanced as much as we possibly could, we built everything out, uh, but we ruined Hanukkah and Christmas. We what? had people that were turning on their toys and the system was just dropping it. And it took probably about a good, like I didn't sleep from uh, Christmas Eve all the way to New Year's uh, working on the system with me and my team uh, because they were just, there were things that we accounted for, there were things that we had built out, we scaled our systems, we did everything that you're supposed to do. And then the real world comes in and just ruins all of that. So, so back up for a second. So, the, the, so you did do the sales. You did sell. We, we did, we you, did you, sell. You, we were, for all intents and purposes, successful. You were successful yeah, selling. We, but yeah. but the, the thing is, unlike another toy, mm -hmm. that's just a toy. There's a cloud there's component. A, there's a cloud yeah, component, an and this. Internet connected toy, so you're internet you you problem. basically broke you broke your your servers. Yeah. You from the use. We you, you we try, you tested for the, them. It's like one of those things that we prepared for like a, a five uh, times number of growth. Yeah. But the amount of traffic that this one was seeing looked more like twenty five times. So 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 in the example of Facebook, right, mm -hmm. where Mark Zuckerberg in that movie, The Social Network, and he's like, just it can't fucking go down. You know, <laughs> whatever it takes, it doesn't go down. Like that, because that's so damaging, right, yeah. for your user base, you know? Because um, you'll have family, like, this fucking thing doesn't well, work. Exactly. Like, you're, you're, think about it. You're an excited kid. You open this thing up. You, you're, you're freaking out everything. You go to use it. It just kind of sits there. Yeah. That's super disappointing. Yeah, of course. And then not only have we have disappointed uh, the kid, but we've also disappointed the parent. And once you've lost that, that's, that's, that's it. Then let the negative reviews come in on yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Word of mouth just really destroys yeah. all sorts past that point. Uh, it was incredibly damaging, and I mean, I want to see even to this point, we're still kind of undoing that damage. Okay, I was going to ask you, like, how do you get over it? Like, how, just keep building? Well, you fix it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we did, uh, for the most part, figure out what was actually causing all these problems. We issued firmware updates, we patched a bunch of things, beefed up our support, which was huge, because having a human element to handhold through it uh, was, was almost even more important than fixing the technical side. Um, a lot of people in their first companies tend to throw that by the wayside. It's like, don't worry about support. Everything's going to work fine. It's like, no, no. beef up your support. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of hand-holding, reaching out to people, um, being very open about it, and like something of a return policy, and even like, you know, well, we are fixing it, have fixed it. We can walk you through testing it again, but if you still want to, we'll accept it back. Uh, basically being very open and engaging with your clients, whoever they are, whether they be customers, signed and paying API consumers, whatever they are, let them know that you're working toward the yeah. problem what the problem actually is. If, yeah. if there's a surge of, of traffic, we prepared for it, but still that's not how things work out. You're never, especially in the, how do I put it, the, the IoT type space, you're never going to see every network topology ever. You're never going to mm -hmm. understand yeah. what the other side of the fence is other than your own systems. Yeah. And you can't really prepare for that. Two of the things that I could pretty much take out of this right away is, number one, you have to have empathy. You yeah. know, I know, I know that you're buying a tree. And this is for everybody listening that buys and complains right away. This is new technology. This is a, you're not just buying a toy that's from Mattel. You know, you're buying a toy that somebody risked their ass to build, they stopped working at their job, they, put, they raised millions of dollars, they put their ass on the line, they blood, sweat, and tears. Just think about that for a second, because if it doesn't work, the, your first response is to be upset. Yeah. But the reality is there's so much behind that. Um, and it's hard, but I think, like you said, the other lesson is to over-communicate to make people feel like you actually care. Because the big companies, most of the time, unless they're really amazing, mm -hmm. you know, if something breaks, you're treated like what? You know, they, people, are, they're like sick of being treated, you know, a certain way. So like the way that I've done it, you know, in, in our space. Mm -hmm. Like it, having open lines of communication, letting people bitch, you know, because you realize at the end of the day, you have to fix these things to be successful. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. It's a solution yeah. to the problem that makes you successful. Absolutely. And I just want to personally thank you guys both for being here. Um, again, we're going to have you guys back. This is going to be an ongoing relationship. And I want to thank everybody for listening. 
Um, again, these are real things that happen, are real people that are building the future, are building new products from toys that are going to change the educational system and for things that are going to save lives. And I'm sure you have data around the lives that you saved, and I want to get into that next time. Sure. But from everybody out there that's watching, thank you so much. Um, tune in and uh, tell us how you feel. Hit the subscribe button, and we'll check you later. Thanks so much.